top priority, best year ever. I'm Brian Moore, and this is Focus NNX. We're here aboard USS Enterprise CVN 65, where a bittersweet ceremony is about to take place. We'll tell you all about it. Plus, shipbuilders are gearing up for the One City Marathon. We'll show you how. And CVN 79, the latest lift as the carrier takes shape. Those stories and more are coming up, but first on deck, we hear a lot about safety being a top priority here at Newport News Shipbuilding, and we're proving it's more than just a slogan. 2016 was the safest year ever, and Aaron Pritchett with our communications division shows us how safety improvements and ergonomics are helping to achieve that goal. 20,000 shipbuilders, 365 days a year, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Newport News Shipbuilding is alive and well building the greatest ships in the world for the U.S. Navy. A truly remarkable place to witness the most talented craftsmen and women hard at work, doing the things that very few can do, from the heaviest of super lifts to the tightening of the smallest screw. But at the forefront of all that they do, safety is their top priority, and the one thing that we as a company are always striving to improve upon year after year. Well, 2016 was our safest year on record, and the future is bright thanks to innovative ideas, new ways of doing things, and a focus on ergonomics that are helping to do away with that very famous, that's the way we've always done it, attitude. 2016 was a phenomenal year. Uh, one of the safest years that the shipyard has ever had, and I attributed that to uh, employee involvement. We engage the employees, uh, we listen to their concerns, we get down on the deck plate, we go into the shops. Management uh, has to take a proactive stance, listen to them, and help give them the resources uh, to make a difference. Facilities maintenance has done an excellent job. They're not the only ones, but they certainly have set the bar in moving forward and taking care of their people in the area of ergonomics. We've been through a three-year journey and you know we focus on certain things and we've getting the, the input from the employees and acting upon that and it's huge. In this shop alone we have eliminated basic material handling with lift assist devices. We have also eliminated 330,000 repetitive motions and 55,000 hammer strikes which is a potential injury each and every time. The old way, um, we get a chisel and a, and a hammer and we'll bang the, the chisel like eight to nine times per bolt. But in this new way, we use the pneumatic bolt cutter and it's safe, it's less noise, go home safe. The people in the shop are witnesses for the benefit of change. We started looking at the simplest job, just stood back and looked and watched our employees. So we started questioning. You know, are the way we're doing the jobs we're doing the best way to do it? Is it the safest way? And we started finding better tools, better processes. And then the employees started seeing their day change and that we were putting importance on what they thought as well. If I'd had this stuff 20 years ago, I'd, I'd probably work 10 more years. I wasn't for it at first. I mean, he started talking about like this gun. I, man, I said, that's going too far. I told my boss, that's going too far. But after I got it and used it, I love it. It's saved me so much. I mean, picking up five times and don't have to hold the gun up. It just, I fell in love with it, fire in the hole. You can work faster that you have these new ergonomic tools and it's less stress on the body. And I think that you, the old way that you just conditioned your mind, that that's what you had to do and you did it. But I think you always, thought it was a tool out there, but you just didn't know where, but they have finally focused and came up with a new tool, and that helps out a whole lot. I'm very, very uh, proud of my crew. Um, it was up here about in the beginning, but um, through changes, um, one employee seeing one, another area change, and everybody got on board. This ergonomic and safety improvement initiative is across the company. And one good thing about this is, is 
having reciprocating to where you're sharing across departments new ideas and I think that's where we can make huge improvements in our quest for zero injuries. One simple idea, one simple thought can change the culture, transform a process, and more importantly improve the health and safety of our workforce. Newport News Shipbuilding is proud of all of our employees and their commitment to safety each and every day as we must continue to work together towards the goal of zero accidents and or injuries this year and for the years to come. For Focus NNS, I'm Aaron Pritchett. Back to you, Brian. All right, Aaron, thanks so much. And you can also check out some of our safety congratulations billboards on various highways like 664 and I-64 around Hampton Roads. Now, let's take a look at some other news from around the yard. Shipbuilders come together to honor civil rights leader Martin Luther King Jr. In a first ever for Newport News Shipbuilding, special MLK Day celebrations were held for each shift. Kelly Walker, general counsel for Huntington Ingalls Industries, was the featured speaker with the message about seizing your moment to be the change for good both at work and in the community. I would say everybody has a moment, at least one every single day. And if you, seizing your moment, change someone's attitude for the better, that can in turn change a community, which can in turn change a nation, which can in turn change the world. The theme of the event was, we have the power to make change. Lace up your running shoes and get moving. For the third year, Newport News Shipbuilding sponsors the Newport News One City Marathon on Sunday, March 12th. One shipbuilder who will be running the 8K is production planner and scheduler Samantha Abbott. She knows all too well how exercise and a healthier lifestyle can change lives as she lost 100 pounds in just over a year. It is so fun. Everybody's so hyped up. And if you're out there doing it, that might help that person next to you to do that one extra step, that one extra movement. You might even end up finding some new friend to, to do this with you. You never know. Just go, have fun, get out there, get moving. Progress for CVN 79, John F. Kennedy. Newport News Shipbuilding lifted a 704 metric ton unit in January into Dry Dock 12, where Kennedy is under construction. The Superlift is the first portion of the carrier's hangar bay. The unit has been under construction since August of 2015 and is made up of smaller units that house such spaces as machinery rooms, berthing, and quality of life spaces such as the barbershop and post office. Kennedy is about 25% complete. And more good news in the aircraft carrier program. Huntington Ingalls Industries is awarded a $25.5 million modification to the advanced planning contract for aircraft carrier Enterprise, CVN-80. The award authorizes Newport News Shipbuilding to begin fabrication of structural components and pre-assemblies in our manufacturing shops. This is an important step in getting the next Ford-class ship off to a great start using lessons learned for construction of CVN-78 and CVN-79. As we mentioned at the top of the show, we're aboard USS Enterprise CVN-65. The ship was deactivated in 2012 and has now been defueled. This world-famous aircraft carrier is now being decommissioned by the United States Navy here at Newport News Shipbuilding. Enterprise is the Big E. And we, all of us, have made her more than a ship. She is a part of us, and we are a part of her. For shipbuilder Ed Sice, seeing the Enterprise be decommissioned is surreal. The Enterprise played a major role in his entire career at Newport News Shipbuilding, and now that's coming to an end. Well, it means a lot to me. I mean, this ship is the basis for all the other carriers, but if this ship hadn't been built, there wouldn't be a shipyard here at this time. But this ship is it. it it started the nuclear carriers. And SICE isn't alone. Thousands of shipbuilders have worked on Enterprise. For them, the first nuclear carrier is much more than just another ship. It's history, legacy, and a source of pride and accomplishment. Working the Enterprise for so many years, um, it, it really has been the pinnacle of my career. My career has just been so enriched by Enterprise. And to see her go like that is, is uh, 
It, it is bittersweet. I think a lot of people put their hearts and souls and not just the workers and the sailors, but again, their families that had to put up with the long hours and, and the long deployments. It's part of history. It's part of being uh, an American. It's part of being part of the world. Well, it was a really big undertaking to build this ship. And, uh, you know, back in the 50s, as 50s technologies using slide rules and everything done by paper till today where we got uh, advanced technology that we use. This ship has been, it's a complex ship. It's probably one of the toughest ships to work on. And uh, so it make, makes you proud to be able to say, yeah, I worked it, maintained it, and kept it on, in service for those many years. Never forget this great warship, her great history, and the great Americans who sailed in her and built her and maintained her. And please, retell her sea stories in such a way that the new plank owners in CBN 80 will carry on the proud legacy and the war fighting spirit forged by all the previous warships and sailors who sailed in Enterprise. So the end of an era for the United States Navy and for Newport News Shipbuilding, but Enterprise will live on. We'll keep you up to date on the latest milestones and progress of CBN 80, the next Enterprise. And that's going to do it for this edition of Focus NNS. Be sure to check out all the latest news on the Newport News Shipbuilding website and on our social media platforms. Plus, don't miss out on timely and important information by downloading our free app, NNS to Go. It's available in the Google and Apple stores on your smartphones and tablets. Plus, check us out on Cox Cable Channel 1886. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Brian Moore.